Last year for the holidays, I ventured into the realm of the Forgotten again and talked about the Forgotten Oscar winning TV and May short film version of A Christmas Carol. How did that work out? Well... But you know what? Since I'm a Taurus and that makes me a bit of a knucklehead, I'm gonna try it again. This time with the Nutcracker. It makes a bit of sense. A recent adaption of the story came out about a couple months ago. Plus, when you think Nutcracker, you think of the holidays, right? This version, however, is a tad different. In what way? How about someone known as the Ragman turning kids into mice if they don't go to bed on time? Interested? But first, a little backstory. Author E.T.A. Hoffman originally wrote a short story in 1816 called The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, which followed a young girl and her toy nutcracker battling a heinous mouse king as well as said nutcracker whisking her away to an enchanted land inhabited by dolls. Now, in 1882, a ballet adapted the story, but this time it was only called The Nutcracker. The story has been adapted who knows how many times since then. The most well-known versions done, however, are probably a segment from Fantasia, Nutcracker, the motion picture in 1986, holiday performances held around the world, to some of the most eyebrow-raising ones were Care Bears, Nutcracker Suite, The Nutcracker in 3D, Barbie in the Nutcracker, to this version, Nutcracker Fantasy. And that's the one I'm tackling today. This is an odd take on the story. It uses some of the framework from the initial tale and then makes a run for it. Also, this is a stop-motion animated film. The film opens with an adult Clara recounting the tale. Once upon a time, many years ago, when I was a little girl, I loved to visit my Uncle Drosselmeyer. Well, I guess we know she's going to make it to the end then. We're introduced immediately then to the evil Ragman, and it looks like he just graduated from Creeper School with honors. He creeps around looking for any kids that stay up too late and turns them into mice and then tosses them into his sack. A couple of questions. One, why only kids? Two, what? Are the parents just fine with this practice? What happens when they come in the morning with their kids missing? Are they just going to shrug their shoulders and go, eh, that brat deserved what they got? Also, where's the FBI, MIB, and BRPD when you really need them? I find it interesting that they call this Nutcracker Fancy. Isn't that redundant? Of course it's a fancy, since one having living toys and magical creepers not been a fancy. Anna is told to go to bed by her aunt, but she's too excited because of her childhood friend Fritz is coming to visit her tomorrow. It's around this time that I notice a couple things. One, Anna's image of Fritz looks like a Bashonen character from Mutina. Two, the design of all the characters is off-putting. I didn't know why at first, but now I do. No one blinks their eyes. Every character has the same thousand mile stare. There's also a lack of movement with their faces. Because of this, the characters have a very disturbing feel to them. Now, prior to seeing this film, I didn't hear much about it, but what I did hear about was that it was crazy, and I'm thinking that the appearance of the puppets might have something to do with that. Well, after Clara claims that there ain't no ragman, and I'm a dope. She'll stay up as long as she wants. She then, like a scary cat, hops in bed and closes her eyes. Wait, why after almost five minutes did the Amherst decide that now was the right time to actually start showing animation? You know, if I keep asking questions, then this reveal is going to be about an hour long. Which isn't good since this film is only one hour and 13 minutes long. Over the next few minutes, Uncle Justin Meyer does his best Ragman impersonation to creep out Claire, argues with his wife, and then just acts weird. It's here where Clara gets the titler nutcracker. Why was Drosselmeyer just shot really creepily at a Dutch angle at the seven minute mark? Uncle Drosselmeyer explains that while he's a clockmaker, his true love is doll making. He also states that something isn't right about the doll he gave her. Foreshadowing, perhaps? Claire's reaction to this is your eighth and ninth nightmare for tonight. After Uncle Drosselmeyer acts creepy one more time, Clara falls asleep via a 1970s rock ballad. Lilies in the night, moon shadow, knocking on the door, calling Clara. You know what? The song is pretty good. Even though it explains everything that's happening on the screen at that time, unfortunately the song ends and Clara wakes up noticing that some rotten mice just kidnapped her doll. 
she very stupidly chases after them. She saves the doll, but it looks like the mice got away, and then this happens. <laughs> What the hell is going on? Who is this? We are Siamese, if you please. Okay, um, just how far are we into this film? I honestly don't think I'm gonna be able to make it the next hour. I know there are both different types of films, but I'm starting to get a little Abar the first Black Superman flashbacks now. Okay, so I don't know if I'm tripping or if the film is here. So anyway, these ladies order the mice to get the doll and suddenly the Nutcracker comes to life and this leads to the laziest, most anticlimactic fight in history. During this, Clara falls asleep and wakes up with the Nutcracker gone. So we're not going to see the conclusion to the fight then? <sighs> Fine. Okay, with the slow tempo of the Nutcracker theme playing and with the aunt walking like this towards Clara, I defy anyone to tell me that this isn't a horror film. It seems Clara is sick now so the aunt goes to get a doctor and I really didn't think I'd see the day where the filmation and Hanna Barbera practice of limited animation would make its way to stop motion but here we are. Clara falls asleep and she seems to be having visions from the previous night. She climbs into the downstairs clock when she sees or thinks she sees her uncle. She continues to chase his image until she winds up in a castle, I think in a room with a whole bunch of pictures of her. A bunch of women and the king greet her and says that she's his daughter named Mary. Hmm, it looks like the king doesn't take Claire's presence there very well. The king gives Claire the lowdown about what happened. That two-headed rat witch thing from earlier is named Morphea and she went to war with the king. He lost because his soldiers are wind-up toys and they unwound themselves. Design flaw. How do you not see that happening from the beginning? As part of an agreement, the queen insisted on an arranged marriage with her son and his daughter. He said, nah, and she very sensibly turned his daughter into a mouse and put her to sleep to this day. Okay, so after seeing Fritz as a soldier to the doll king, Claire just isn't gonna say anything at all? Really? Really? Okay. Then for the next two minutes, what I can only describe as nonsensical nonsense occurs. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, do not be a... <laughs> ah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Five years, that's all. Hey. Finally, the Russian stereotype states that he has a plan to wake the princess. Ah, so that's what's supposed to be going on? Then what was with all the dancing and the robot cat chasing the toy mouse and vice versa for? Was there an actual script to this film or is everything done in a stream of conscious way? Don't believe me? For the next several minutes, we have characters wanting to chop off people's heads, sing sonnets, do explosive experiments, and run around kissing everyone in order to wake up and change the princess back to normal. This silliness goes on for another few minutes and what is the king's response to the so-called wise men's actions? There is no hope. Now that is probably the sanest thing said in this film so far. Okay, so we're 35 minutes in and I think we have the plot for the film is to return the princess back to normal. One question though. Where is the ragman? He's been gone for over 30 minutes. If he plays no part in the story, then why introduce him as the main antagonist in the first place? Later on, Claire is seen walking the dark streets when she's accosted by a creepy man in black asking, Young lady, what are you doing walking alone at night? Are you looking for someone? Hmm? When even the creeper is questioning your Sani, then you really know you have problems. Fortunately, he doesn't do anything to her, but after she tells him the story of the princess, he tells her to find a gypsy fortune teller and say, Queen of Time to her. And no, I don't know what that phrase is supposed to do. Well, later on, Clara meets the Queen of Time as well as some very choppy editing. 
Queen in Time says that she might not be able to help her and then shows Claire, Morphea, and the mice. They're having a ball and she promises her son that he will marry the princess. The boy then proceeds to French a picture of the princess. Ew. Okay, so we have about 33 minutes left in the film and we still haven't seen the Ragman return. What was the point then? <sighs> well, anyway... Clara finds out that she has to break Morpheus shell of darkness to break the curse. Later on, Clara tells Franz, who she seems not to be surprised that he's there and is part of the king's military. Well, she tells him the info, so he's off to war now. I know that the intent for the end of the scene is supposed to be an emotional goodbye, but the acting is as wooden and choppy as the marionettes. We didn't get a scene with the king's army getting wound up to go into battle. I think the king is off his rocker. He admitted earlier that his troops lost before because they came unwound. And now he's doing the same thing again. Plus, it looks like they're made of wood kindling. How successful of an army can you have if an entire regiment could be taken out by the little match girl? Elsewhere, Queen Morphea and the Rat Pack are having a grand old time. The party is intercut awkwardly with the Nutcrackers marching. That's a weird way to drink alcohol, but hey, whatever works, right? The King's army finally arrives and they begin their assault on the Rat Pack. They're also trying to blow up the Shadow Shell. Okay, I know it's supposed to be indestructible, but is it wise for the Queen to just have it out in the open like that? The mice make a successful counterattack by using recycled animation to knock down the dolls. So let me get this straight. The King's army prior to this film was beaten by becoming unwound is losing here because someone can just tap on them and make them fall over. Why is the king still in power? Impeach him, please. The only way he could come up with a more pathetic plan is with all of his soldiers being made of cheese. Look at this nonsense. Get ready, man. Yeah. Oh, hey. Come back here. Now human just got defeated by getting tripped. It's as if he didn't have any object permanence. So just what is Fritz's big comeback plan? To rewind the dolls. Is everyone in the king's army this stupid? Okay, just what the hell is going on here? I think Morphea just unleashed a cat and is surprised when it attacked her and the mice. Clara sneaks into the palace and Franz takes out the shell, but Morphea transforms him into a nutcracker for the rest of his life, and the princess is turned back to normal. Sometime later at the king's palace, the princess is dancing with herself in front of a mirror. Everyone seems to be happy, but uh, Franz is an unmoving nutcracker, and didn't you earlier, Mr. King, say that if he defeated Morphea and turned the princess Mary back, that he would marry her? Franz! France, my boy. Where are you? That's strange. Oh, sure. Now you remember him. So basically, once Mary turned back, the king just had a party before the general of his army returned to give him any news about what happened. Ugh. The film has 22 minutes left, so I'm going to assume that the secondary or third dairy plot is Clara trying to get France turned back to normal. Well, Claire returns and gives everyone the sad news about France. Princess Mary doesn't take it too well and refuses to be married to a doll. Wait, aren't there real people that are married to dolls? Claire tries to convince Mary by saying, don't knock it till you try it. Mary counters with, well, why don't you marry it? Uh, so did this film inspire millions of kids and Pee Wee Herman with that phrase? The princess then proceeds to go, I'm too pretty for all this. Now everyone, let's go back to the party. So Claire and the inanimate Franz are on their own. Just how is Claire supposed to get back to the real world? By waking up. Hey, be quiet you. Claire makes her way back to the Queen of Time to help Franz, but she just tells Claire to look into yourself and then disappears. Thanks for nothing, Lee. For the next couple of minutes, Claire wanders in the dark while I think some 1970s folk music plays. It's not bad, actually. 
one of the injured mice is stalking her. After getting minimum help from a puppeteer who refers her to see the timekeeper, she meets the timekeeper who tells her that her love will save Franz. She doesn't get it. In order for him to be transformed back, a sacrifice must be made. Equivalent exchange? So did Hiromu Arakawa get inspiration for Full Metal Alchemist from this film? After learning that only true love sacrifice can transform Franz back to normal, this happens. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I will admit the non-stop motion animation looks impressive. It's the most creative use of animation I've seen so far in this film. It also reminds me of the experimental use of animation during the 1970s. Now, this scene would mean more to me if I believed in Clara's and Franz or in their relationship in general. Clara is then transported to the land of the happy times and for the first time since the opening of the film, music from the ballet is played or a variation of it. All this was a dream because Clara wakes up with that gimpy mouse trying to snatch the Nutcracker away from her. Now that mouse is Morpheus' son and he wants to kill Franz. After a brief wrestling match, Clara sacrifices herself to save Franz, but she has that glow and this happens. <laughs> Clara then wakes up again. Man, talk about Inception. This was all a fever dream. Fritz arrives and then Uncle Drosselmeyer quotes Walt Disney. Dreams can come true. Whoa, more or less. After a couple of birds make out, the film ends with Fritz and Clara staring awkwardly into each other's creepily dead eyes and they live happily ever after. Wait a minute. Franz looks like a teenager between 16 and 17, and Clara looks like she's between 8 and 10 years old. I guess he has a thing for lollies. <laughs>